Welcome everyone to Les Picker Fine Art Photography. I'm Les and today we're going to be following up on a video that I did recently on how to create decal edging on your print for your prints so that it gives a different look maybe a more decor type look for your home or for, even for a gallery. So um, here you see a shot of the decal edge print as it appears in a frame. And today, uh, so as it turns out, right after that uh, video appeared on YouTube, uh, Dan wrote to me and said, that's all fine and good, but how do you actually mount the decal edge print to the gator board to give it a standoff effect, as you just saw in the uh, panning of video. And that's, it's a nice effect. It stands off from the background. Uh, in the case of the frame that you see in, that you saw in the uh, introduction here, uh, it also nests very nicely inside the frame and it gives it a, a, a sense of detail and texture and, and um, it, looks, it looks really nice. So I thought today I would answer Dan's question very simply. Uh, there are two, two ways, if you will, that I'll show you, two different methods for adhering the decal edge print to the substrate, which in this case will be gator board. And by the way, I urge you to use gator board, not foam board. Foam board warps. It's good, it has many other uses in photography, but uh, not for mounting a print. If you want to mount a print to something, you would do, use gator board because it's hard and it does not warp. So I have a piece here, for instance. You can hear it, uh, very, very solid material. So what I want to show you very briefly is, uh, here, here's a typical print, eight and a half by 11. And I would, of course, first measure how much, I'm not going to go over how I did the decal edging because I did that in the last video. But once you have your decal edging and uh, you, you would measure in about three quarters of an inch, maybe an inch, even an inch and a half from each edge and cut a piece of gator board to that size. So in this particular case, I have that all set uh, and it kind of looks like that. It, you can imagine how that would be. Uh, so, of course, you don't want to see it from the sides. You want to have it stand out, though, from, from your background. Um, so what I suggest, there are two methods I'm going to give you. Here's the first one. One method is to use something called dry mount tissue. And it comes in for smaller sizes like 8.5 by 11, even by 11, 11 by 14. Uh, you can buy them already cut. They come in sheets, uh, 25 sheets to a box. You can buy more, of course, buy it in bulk. Uh, and then cut it to the size that you would need. So in this case, I have a sheet here, and I would cut it to the exact size of the backing board, not the print of the backing board. Once you have the, um, the gator board and the the uh, uh, adhering sheet, the, the dry mount tissue, you will put them together like in a sandwich. Now we, in our studio, since we're a, a commercial professional studio, we have a dry mount press. And, and, and they're expensive and I don't expect that a lot of people will have one. Uh, or if you do have one, it'll be a smaller size and that would be fine for an eight and a half by 11 print. But if you wanna go larger or if you don't, have a dry mount press, then you have to go to, to option B. And that, it's really quite simple. It, it, there's nothing complex about it, folks. You put, make this sandwich, you find heavy duty paper. I'm using this uh, butcher block paper, which I got at the hardware store, by the way. And um, they come in rolls. I cut it to a larger size than the print that you're going to be using here, and simply take an iron, a home iron, make sure there's no water in it, make sure it's totally empty, there's not going to be any chance of steam whatsoever. Um, <clears throat> put it at its lowest setting, and usually I think that that silk, the silk setting or whatever it is, I think it's about 180 degrees, and uh, slowly, slowly run your iron gently, slowly, all over the surface, all over that surface, 
and, and do that for uh, uh, several minutes, like two or three minutes. When I'm in a dry press, I do it for two minutes, but you might want to do three or four minutes with using an iron. Being careful not to stop at any one spot for too long, but don't go fast back and forth. Just nice and easy, let that heated iron uh, go all over the, the uh, board. Um, also, you have to be careful when you're, when you're doing this, since the print overhangs the board, be careful not to roll over the edge. Make sure you keep that iron going, uh, the, the front part of it goes over the edge, but don't let the rest of it go over because it's going to bend the print. All right, uh, that's how that works. That's option one for how to um, affix your decal edge print to your substrate, to your, your gator board in this case. Option two, there is a substance uh, put out by Breathing Color um, that, and I'll put this in, in the uh, uh, description below. Breathing Color puts out a, a, a liquid called Glamour 2 and it's rated as a museum grade, so it is acid free. Um, we have had a lot of success with it, for, especially if you're going to do larger prints. I'm talking, once you get to 13 by 19, 17 by 22, or any 24 inch print and above, uh, it's, it, you can, if you have a large enough uh, dry mount press, you can, you can certainly use that, the dry mount press up to the size that, that you wish. But if you get really large, you need to use uh, a substance sort of like this um, uh, Glamour 2, it's called. Now, there are instructions on the Breathing Color site. I'm going to link you directly to that video that it shows you how to apply this stuff. But basically, all you need is a little tray like this, a um, foam-based roller. You don't want a, a uh, nappy roller. You want a nice uh, foam-based roller here. And you just simply uh, put it on. You dilute it in the way that you're supposed to. It, so even though this is intended as a coating for canvases, it actually works very, very well as an adhesive. And you would simply, in that case, coat the board, that the, that, uh, the gator board that you're going to put the print on. And then I would recommend you create, uh, put some lines line out the back, put lines where uh, the size of the gator board that you're about to mount, and then turn your print upside down on a clean, uh, dust-free surface. So I would, you might want to use that same kind of butcher paper. And then you would simply put the uh, gator board with the glamour to that already affixed to it to fit between the lines on the back and then put some weights down on it. And that's really all there is to it, folks, to, to get the, your decal print to adhere to the gator board backing. Now, a couple of things, though, for after. Once it's adhered to the backing, you still have the issue of how to get it mounted on the, um, the board inside the frame. So I wanted to show that to you just, just for a moment here. Uh, there's nothing detailed about it, but I have uh, three pieces of gator board, well, two pieces of gator board here and one piece of mat board. I like to, when I'm showing prints, I like to put them up against um, a mat board rather than gator board uh, when it's going to actually show as the backing because the mat board has a nice texture to it. Gator board is very smooth and it, it, it just doesn't look like a finished product. So I put this in here uh, as such. I would then glue it, I put a line of glue before I put these things down so they stay in place. And you need to remember that when you're doing this, Here's another uh, picture, by the way, with a with a uh, with uh, a print adhered to some um, mat board uh, uh, with using the tissue paper, the dry mount tissue paper. But when you're going to mount this whole thing to your backing in your frame, you don't have to worry about this side of it. You can put down Elmer's white glue 
and just glue it uh, to. So I, I would do that. I mean, if I once I finally mount this, I would have no problems mounting it with Elmer's white glue on the back uh, of the gator board and then set it back down into the print. So it's really a, quite a simple process. The final thing I just want to say is in order to get a, a nice finished product, um, it, it's always a good idea to put a dust cover on your print. It could be, you know, it could be this butcher block paper. In fact, we do use that uh, sometimes as our, as our uh, dust cover uh, or black uh, d uh, butcher paper. Either way, uh, seal up your, your frame in the back with this before you wire it. It gives a nice finished look if you intend to um, sell your prints or even show it in your own home. It's always a good idea to have a dust cover. So that's it for now. I hope you uh, folks, uh, Dan, especially you, have your, your question answered. Uh, similarly, if any of the rest of you, if any of these videos raise questions in your own mind, uh, don't hesitate to write in and we'll try to answer them as we can. Until uh, the next time, please stay safe and... Uh, We'll, we'll talk to you then.